Hi, I'm Björn at Koitec, and today I'm going to show you the three best pra practices to get that long battery life for your IoT device. There are three steps to consider. First step is know your device. In this step, you will optimize design and measure for all conditions. Second step, profile your battery. In this step, you will evaluate and pick the right battery for your device, not based on data sheet, but actual measurement. Third step is emulate the battery for your application. Uh, in, the, uh, in the end, you will have an estimate of the battery lifetime of your device. I will use the following setup. As IT device, I have chosen the sensitive Strip MSH. It's an ultra slim LoRaWAN device. It has temperature, humidity and light sensors. It also has a magnet sensor and this is what I will use when I trigger one active event. I also use the Oti, Oti Arc from Koitec. It's a small portable power supply. It, uh, it measures current consumption as well as voltages. It also has a data acquisition. Uh, it can also profile and emulate batteries. And this is why this is so great when uh, we work with this three-step method. Okay, the first step is to know your device. So let's start by connecting my device. I have the Oti here. I will use it only uh, through USB here. And let's connect that first. So since my device is a three volt device to have USB cable connected, is enough for my power. If I need more power, I can connect a DC adapter that's connected on the back side of the OTI. Then I can go up to higher voltages. So let's connect the sensor. So I power it through the main port here. Uh, to know uh, more about my device to be able to optimize it. I can also use more functions like uh, if I have the possibility to send out UART signals from my sensor, I can connect that to the expansion port. Uh, on the expansion port there are other functions that is also very useful when I work with optimizing my design. I can measure a subsystem uh, current and I can measure more voltages than only the main voltage here. I can also measure some uh, digital signals. So the more information I have, uh, the better I can optimize my design. So let's power up. I go to Oti application. I choose three volt and I have set an overcurrent protection here as well. Okay, so it's being powered up now. Uh, I will start by including the sensor to the network. I do this by a magnet here on this side of the sensor. One, two, three. So now the sensor is being included in the LoRa network. Okay, so now it's included. So what I will do is that I will um, record and measure different activities. Uh, so let's say a use case where I have one activity per hour and the sensor is far away from the gateway. Then I will set the data rate to zero. That means uh, spreading factor 12. The other use case I will look at is uh, if I'm closer to the gateway. So I will set the data rate to five with a spread. That means spreading factor seven. And then I will have more activities per hour and I will choose to have four activities per hour. 
So that is more like an um, opening closing uh, sensor. And the first use case with one activity power, maybe it's just a, a temperature humidity uh, sensor sending every hour. And I need to wait a little bit after the inclusion in the network uh, before I uh, start to do activities. Since I'm limited in how much I am allowed to send uh, in the LoRa network. So first, now I will set the data rate to zero. And I send the data when I get an activity. So let's have an activity here. I get the magnet sensor. So here is my activity. And actually, during this activity, uh, the message to set the device to data rate zero was also being received. So let's wait a little bit longer uh, and do a new activity. So we are sure that this setting is being received. Okay, so let's have an activity now. So here is my activity, for example, when some data is being uh, sent, like a door was opened or a temperature was being transmitted. So let's measure this part. We have a high part here roughly 1.3 seconds with an average current consumption of 38 milliamp and if we look the complete activity it consumes roughly 44 microwatt hour We also need to measure the sleep current. And now I want to measure that for a minute, at least for this workshop. If I was going to do this during development, then I would choose to have a much longer period where I measure uh, sleep current. I would also do my measurement for the activities several times to see if I get variations. So here is a sleep period and I can see that the sleep current consumption is 1.43 microamp and for one minute the energy consumed uh, during sleep is roughly 72 nanowatt hour. And I need to multiply this by 60 to get the correct uh, energy consumption per hour in sleep mode. So now I have both a sleep and an active event. And the, the sleep is a factor of 1000 less than the the active event. So when I measure my active event I can disregard the sleep current consumption. I could subtract that from the measurement but the difference will be so small. So let's send new message. Now I want to set it to data rate 5. And I need an activity. 
to receive the data. So it, the sensor is still in uh, data rate zero when I received the message. So it should be updated the next event. Okay, so here we have the activity during data rate five. As you can see, the peak is much shorter. In data rate five, we have a peak of roughly 50 millisecond. And in data rate zero, we had 1.3 seconds. So let's measure the energy for this activity. So now the energy for the activity is two, roughly 2.4 microwatt hour per activity. So also here, the sleep current is a factor of thousand lower, so I uh, disregard this during this measurement. So we need to calculate the energy here and because we're going to have four of these short messages and compare that to one of these longer messages. So what need to be uh, thought about is that uh, when you work with optimizing your LoRa design, uh, it's not always better to have a higher date rate because if you have too high date rate, you will have a lot of uh, re uh, need to resend information because the information was not, be, not being uh, received. So that means a lot of transmissions, retransmissions, and this in the end might result in a higher current consumption than if you go to a lower data rate. So you need to uh, try this out, uh, adjust the data rate uh, according to uh, how well the messages is being, is being received. Another thing we that is interesting is also in this case we got an average in, in the peak of just below 40 milliamp. So how is that affected by a lower voltage? because the battery will drop in voltage. So now I have set the voltage to 2.5 volt instead of 3 volt. This is the part where I uh, lowered the voltage. So I got a current rush. So let's have an event. So as you can see now, the voltage is much higher, 46.2 milliamp, before it was 38 milliamp. So this sensor will consume more and more current, the lower the battery voltage will go. This is also important to measure, measure all the behaviors of your device. So what is important during the first step, when you, uh, you measure your device, you, you understand it, is that while you do your development, hardware and software development, uh, measure all the time, because what you, uh, the changes you will do will affect the power consumption. So do modifications, measure, 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 measure. It's very important to measure all the time. 
Another thing, uh, the environment will also affect your current consumption. So if your sensor is uh, located outdoor, you will have a lower temperature, then this might also affect the current consumption of your device. So measure the current consumption for all uh, environmental conditions that the device will be in. Another thing also is the placement. As you saw, if I was uh, if I had a lower data rate, the energy consumption increased. Uh, so if I'm far away from the gateway, I will force my sensor to go in a lower data rate. And that means that it will consume more energy for each transmission. So uh, be, make sure that you measure all of these uh, conditions as well. So all of this data, how the device behaves, uh, will be used in the second step. And this is where we will profile the battery according to how the device will consume energy. Second step is to profile your battery. Uh, this step is regarding evaluating and choosing the right battery for your device. And as input to this step, we need the power profiles created in the first step. Possibly you already have chosen a battery. Otherwise, in this step, you will also uh, profile several batteries and in the end, evaluate uh, the batteries and choose the right one for your use case. Let's begin with connecting the battery. So I disconnect my device. And I will uh, profile a coin cell battery. So I connect the battery positive to the plus and battery negative to the minus. Uh, if I profile a battery that needs higher voltage than uh, 3.75, then I need to again use the DC adapter. Then I can uh, profile up to 4.55 volt. So for example, a lithium ion battery, I would need to have the adapter. But in my case, it's a coin cell, three volt. So I'm good without the DC adapter. Also, if, if I, uh, if I will profile a battery with a high discharge current, there is a risk that I get a voltage drop in the cables. In that case, I can use the sense plus and sense minus pins here and connect sense plus to the positive pole of the battery and the sense minus to the negative. And then Otto will compensate for the voltage drop in the cables. So let's start the Otti application, as I've done here. And now let's choose a battery profiling. To use battery profiling, you need a battery toolbox, Otti battery toolbox, or uh, the enterprise license. So here is how I set up the discharge. So I choose voltage and that's the nominal voltage of the battery. This will be uh, measured anyway, so it's more for information. And then I will choose a high current discharge and a low current discharge for uh, high, uh, the time high and the time low. And then I choose the exit condition where my discharge is ended. And that is by uh, selecting my minimum open circuit voltage. So that's when the battery is not loaded, zero milliamp discharge, or if I at any time reach my cutoff voltage. Or I can also choose to limit the number of iterations uh, for my discharge. So uh, the tool will then stop 
profiling when any of this exit condition is met. It will complete the already started cycle and then it will finish. Also, possibility to choose a four wire for, for uh, compensating voltage drop in my cables. And also I can choose to start a recording while I do the discharge. Uh, my recommendation is to not do a recording while you do discharge. If you, if you have a discharge that takes a long time, then I can also add some uh, battery details to remember what the battery uh, model and manufacturer, etc. In our use case, uh, in normal, you should be as accurate as possible. Uh, for this workshop, I will uh, make a more generic profile, but actually when you work with uh, profiling batteries, I uh, suggest that you keep it as accurate and as much similar as possible as how your device consumes energy. But I will set it up with a, a simplified LoRa profile. Uh, I will keep it somewhere between uh, data rate 0 and data rate 1. Uh, data rate 0 has roughly 1.3 second high uh, pulse and uh, data rate 1 roughly uh, 0 0.6 second as we saw in step 1. So I will choose one second high discharge. Uh, actually if I was going to uh, do this I would make one profile per uh, data rate because I need to see how the data rate affects the, the battery performance as well. So in this case, I intend to use a CR2450 coin cell. Uh, I don't need to connect sense plus sense minus with this coin cell. The discharge is not that uh, high. Uh, as, as I said, mainly interesting for high discharge like lithium ion batteries. So I'll set the voltage to 3 volt. That's a nominal uh, coin cell voltage. I will set uh, the high discharge to 40 milliamp for one second. And then I will choose my low current to Uh, let's say 600 microamp uh, and for 179 seconds. And so how did I choose these values? Uh, I know that my uh, CR2450 20, uh, contains roughly 600 milliamp hours. So if I calculate this discharge then it will take roughly 30 days and that's a, a good time to discharge a coin cell battery. So depending on what I set as high and low current consumption and the timing uh, it takes di uh, different times to discharge but this is uh, I believe a good setting in this use case. I will stop my profiling uh, at 2 volts. Uh, I will have a cutoff voltage of 0 0.6 volt. Uh, the reason for choosing this is that usually you don't discharge a battery, uh, a coin cell battery below 2 volt. And the cutoff voltage I set to 0 0.6 uh, because I want to see uh, the discharge as long as possible. I can also set the iteration. I don't want it to stop due to uh, I reached the maximum number of iterations. I don't use a four wire. 
and normally I would not choose to automatically start the recording but in this case I will do it so you will see what it looks like and then I have it's a 0232 in this case otherwise I would use 02450 and it's a no name and it's this size okay Typically, uh, this is very important setting, of course. Uh, the closer I can keep this, high and low, uh, and the timing, the closer I can keep it as to how my device consumes energy, the more accurate my profile will be. But I cannot keep um, the same settings as uh, my, uh, my sensor here, because then I will probably be uh, discharging this battery for 10 years and I don't have that time. So I needed to do some accelerated discharge and uh, then all uh, changes will of course introduce errors. So I need to do uh, careful considerations where I uh, increase the discharge. Okay, so we are ready to start the discharge. First, it uh, calibrate the auto arc, and as you can see now, it has started to discharge the battery. So here we have the forty milliamp discharge for a second, and then it goes to six hundred microamp for one hundred seventy nine seconds. So here we can see how the voltage changes uh, during the discharge and here you can also see where you are in the iteration of the discharge so we are now iteration one is done and it was when we had the high load we are now executing iteration two here we can also see the last measured voltage and how much energy that has been discharged from the battery. So we have one high discharge now uh, every three minutes. So we just have to wait. And as you can see now, we have our second iteration after three minutes. You can also see that uh, my voltage of the coin cell is above 3 volt and that's normal with a new coin cell battery. So here we have a little bit above 3.2 volts. And we will see uh, that the longer the discharge continues, the lower this voltage will be of course. And the higher the internal resistance will be. We can also see that during this 40 milliamp uh, pulse you can see that the voltage drops drastically so this will continue until we reach the our exit condition and then when uh, that is done uh, the profiling stops and you can then save your profile so let's stop this for now. Then I can save it. Now it's not important to save because it's not very interesting profile here. But to show how it then looks like. So we go to project settings. The profile is then saved. So you can find it here. So let me pick coin cell. So what you will then see in the profile is the discharge curve for the battery. So the green curve is actually the open circuit voltage and the red curve is when you 
discharge the battery with uh, with with a higher current. So as you as you can see, I discharged the, this battery with 40 milliamp pulses for one second, but in the graph it says 50 milliamp, and the reason for this is that the RT tool it picks a good voltage curve. So it calculates this curve based on the discharge data that were being saved in the profile. Because what, what the tool does, it will profile the open circuit voltage, the internal resistance and the used capacity for the complete discharge cycle. Okay, so this is the end of step two. What is important during this step is to profile your battery as close as possible to how your device will use energy. Also, profile the battery in all the environmental condition your, your device will be in. If it's intended to be outdoors, you must make a profile in cold climate. If it's going to be in hot, uh, temp high temperatures, then you also need to profile it in, in uh, these higher temperatures. So all the environments that you intend to use your device, you need to make also make a, a battery profile. Uh, you need to accelerate the discharge in most cases, because otherwise the profile will take too long time. So you may need to make uh, careful choices how to accelerate the discharge to make the profile as accurate as possible. And when you do long profiling, don't start a recording as this might slow the computer down. Uh, so for, uh, for safety, I never uh, record my long discharge because the profile will be saved anyway. Okay, so in the next step, step three, we will use these profiles that we have created in step two. Okay, in uh, this third step, it is to emulate the battery for your application. In this step, it is regarding letting uh, RT Arc emulate the battery that you profiled in step two. Let's start by connecting our uh, device again. So I disconnect the battery. and connect my sensor. So let's go to new project and in, in the project setting here as supply, I then choose the battery profile that I have just created. In my case, I will choose a CR2450R from Murata. And this is profile according to the the setting we just talked about, it's 40 milliamp high load and uh, during one second. So this is the discharge profile for this battery. So I can uh, decide where I want to be on the discharge curve for the battery. I can choose if I want to stay constant in a position or if I want to move along the discharge curve as my uh, sensor use energy. In my case, I would like to have it in track uh, because I would like to emulate the battery and the, the uh, capacity will then uh, increase, the use capacity will then increase as I use energy. Uh, I uh, also need to enable the voltage channel and the current channel, because I would like to see both the current consumption and uh, the voltage, because the voltage will show me voltage drop from the battery. Okay. So let's turn on. We should have a brand new battery. So let's power up. And again, I need to include my sensor in the network.
I will set the height of this window so it's easier to see the voltage. So now I'm included in the network, but I need to change the data rate to uh, data rate zero. And I will do that by sending messages to it. And since I have just included it in, in the network, I'm limited in how much uh, I can send. So let's see if we are ready. So I force it to listen by an activity. Now we are in data rate zero. We see that now we are up to 1.3 second again. So this is state rate zero. So I stop the recording. So I rename this. So this is the include and data rate zero. So now I need to wait a little bit since I'm limited in how much data I can send. Okay, so I set this to zero in use capacity because I would like to use it as a new battery. I will hide this and start a new recording. So this is my active event for when the battery is new. So I have my 38 milliamp and during the transmission the battery voltage dropped to just below 3 volt. So this was the Murata battery at zero milliamp hours used capacity. So now let's increase that. I'll increase it to 100 milliamp hours used capacity. And I wait a little bit. And now I start a new recording. And I create my event. Okay, so this means that I was not allowed to send the data. So we have to wait until the data is sent. As you can see now, the battery voltage is much lower now when I have used 100 milliamp hours from the battery. There is my event. So I stop the recording. So this was 100 milliamp hours, but I would like to compare them so I mark the area in between. And I move the yellow to the left.
So now I can, can uh, compare the two different used capacities. So now with 100 milliamp hours used capacity, I drop to 2.68 volt during my transmission. And as you see, my uh, current consumption for this active phase also increases due to that the voltage drops. So let's continue increasing. So this was 200 milliamp hours. And I'm moving it to the right. So now I'm down to 2.55 volt. And I will continue increasing until I reach uh, my cutoff voltage and uh, where I get my sensor to stop functioning. This was 300. So now we're down to 2.31 volt. So I will try with 400 now, as you can see now, getting close to the end of this battery. Let's see if my sensor can manage this. Okay, we have to wait a little bit before sending. Yes, we survived. This was 400. Oh, now we're down to 1.76 volt here. So I guess that we are really, really close to the cutoff. So I make just a small step now. To wait. Oh no! We failed here. So let's put it back to new battery again. Okay, so this was 410. And we failed here. As you can see, this peak is when we try to start a transmission, but then the voltage drops so much, so we cannot continue. So if I read in the Murata datasheet, it states uh, nominal capacity is 500 milliamp hours. When I profile it according to my lower profile, I could get 444 milliamp hours until I reached uh, my exit conditions. And when I emulate the battery with my uh, sensor, 
then I could see that I could actually use somewhere between 400 and 410 milliamp hours. So that is my usable energy. And this is what we will use uh, when we calculate battery lifetime. Okay, so let's uh, try another battery that we also have profiled. So let's pick CR2450 from Energizer. And we start with a new battery. And create an event. So this was Energizer zero milliamp hours. And let's increase to 100. As you can see, something will happen here. So let's be careful here. slower here 150 have to wait so now we are at 2.11 volt so it's dropping uh, pretty quick Let's go to 200. Now we are in the slope here. So let's see what that means. Oh no, it couldn't handle that. Let's go back to a new battery again. Okay. So this energizer, 200 milliamp hour, we got a fail. So what is important here is that I have only profiled one battery for each manufacturer. So it could be that this battery that I profiled maybe was not the best battery in the batch maybe it was a bad battery or it is uh, how the battery from the manufacturer, uh, how, how it works. We are not sure. And to be sure, you must profile a lot. So you must profile several batteries in the same use case uh, from the same manufacturer to see that you don't on, only do a profile for a bad battery but that uh, what you profile actually is what you can expect from, from the, this battery. That is very important. So in this case, I could not use uh, 200 milliamp hours. So the truth lies somewhere between 150 and 200 milliamp hours for this battery. And now we have come to the point where we uh, want to calculate the battery lifetime. So I have uh, here my recording from uh, the sensitive MHH sensor. So we have the two use cases. The use case one was with uh, data rate zero <clears throat> and I have that here. And uh, we, sh we said that we wanted one transmission per hour in data rate zero. And the second use case 
was with data rate 5 and we have that here and 4 activities per hour. So let's start with case 1. So let's zoom in. So this is our activity. So one uh, activity, it costs roughly four to four microwatt hours. And we have the voltage three volt here. So if I divide it by three, I get 14.7 microamp hours roughly. So I go from, uh, from uh, power to current. Not really, since it's ours as well. Uh, so this is the cost for one activity. And since I have one activity per hour, that means that I get, in average, 14.7 microamp current consumption for this activity. And I have disregarded the sleep current in this calculation because the sleep current is a factor 1000 lower. But now, for this hour, I have this activity and then I, the rest of the time I will be sleeping. So I need to measure my, here I have a longer period of sleep. So I have 1.44 microamp in sleep current. So let's say 1.4 microamp in sleep. So in total, if I add one activity and sleep for one hour, I get 14.7 microamp plus 1.4 microamp, and that's 16.1 microamp. And when we emulated the battery, uh, we saw that uh, Murata CR2450R, I could measure that I could use uh, somewhere between 400 and 410 milliamp hours. So let's calculate for 410 milliamp hours. So then we take our 410 milliamp hours, that's our usable energy, and we divide it with our current consumption, average current consumption, uh, and we said that was 16.1 microamp for one hour. So that gives us uh, battery lifetime of 25,500 hours, roughly. And that is 2.9 years. So our first case with data rate zero, once an hour, with our Murata CR2450R battery, we estimate 2.9 years battery lifetime. Let's check our second use case with data rate five. So the energy, the cost of sending, uh, the cost of one activity in data rate five is roughly 2.4 microwatt hour. And again, we divide that with the voltage, three volt, so that means roughly 0 0.8 microamp hour per activity. And we will have four activities per hour. So we multiply it by four. That gives us 3.2 microamp in average current consumption for these four activities. So again, we add that to the sleep current and that was 1.4 microamp. That gives us in total 4.6 microamp. So again, we take our 410 milliamp hours and divide it with 4.6 microamp. And that gives us a battery lifetime of roughly 10 years. So our use case with one transmission in data rate zero, one transmission power, gave us battery lifetime 2.9 years. And four transmission in data rate five 
gave the battery lifetime roughly 10 years. Okay, uh, I have a note here with about this calculation and what is not included in this calculation is the battery self discharge. So I have done all the calculations without one really important aspect and that is the battery self discharge. So when you do your calculation you have to add this yourself. So for example it depends on the, the battery chemistry and the size of the battery etc how much self discharge you have. For example a primary lithium metal battery like the coin cell I have here they have a self discharge uh, of roughly 10% in five years. While if you have an alkaline battery, it's about two to 3% per year. A lithium ion battery, 5% the first 24 hours, and then uh, one to 2% per month. And if you have a safety circuit, which I hope you have, then you need to add on uh, roughly 3% to this. And also the temperature affects the self discharge a lot. So a rule of thumb is that self discharge, it doubles every 10 degrees Celsius. So if you intend to have your sensor in high temperature uh, environment, then the self discharge will increase a lot. And again, I cannot state this uh, enough. Uh, all these calculations and profiling of the batteries is done with only one battery. So you need to give yourself more statistical background of the, how the batteries behave so you can do an accurate calculation. Of course you also need to uh, profile the battery and profile your sensor in all the environment that uh, all environment and all use cases that uh, it might be in. So if it's outdoor sensor you need both warm and cold uh, climate. Uh, you need to profile both close to the gateway and far away from the gateway. You need to uh, try out different timing between uh, transmission and sleeping because the more often you do your transmission the quicker you will discharge the battery of course. So you need to uh, take all of this into consideration while you optimize your uh, device battery lifetime. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have uh, learned a lot how you can uh, work with this uh, three-step method to optimize your design, uh, working with the batteries, choosing the right battery and then emulate the battery to in the end calculate the battery lifetime of your device. So thank you very much.